Hi everyone, welcome to The Last Drop. I am Chris, thank you for joining me today. A bit of an interesting video for you, um, hopefully. Um, it's my whiskey collection, or my whiskey selection, as some people like to call it. Um, basically, I'm gonna go through all the whiskies I have. Uh, sort of an excuse just to clean my shelves, really. No, not these ones here, but the ones over there. Um, so yeah, Let's, I've sort of sectioned them into various categories. So I'm gonna start off with blends. Uh, then I've got some bourbon and a rye. Uh, then I've got some scotch um, of various uh, regions, even. Uh, then I've got a couple of alternatives. Uh, then I've got uh, two interesting whiskies that don't really fall into the others. And the beginning of my Campbelltown collection. Right, first bottle up is Compass Box. So, Compass Box. Uh, Orchard House, uh, this is blended malt, of course. Um, blended malt scotch whiskey, uh, fabulous stuff. It, it does exactly what it says on the tin, it's very Ron Seeley. Um, the fact that it is, yeah, um, peaches and apples, pears, all those sort of lovely fruity notes. Um, and yeah, another fabulously tall bottle. But there we go, Compass Box Orchard House. I give this a good. 7 out of 10, and if you're looking at the scales, 7 out of 10 is actually really quite good. So, there we go. Right, next up is Chivas Regal 13 year old extra uh, blended scotch whiskey. This is almost teaspooned, um, and it's. I was in a tasting maybe two years ago during COVID, and with one of the blenders from Chivas, and yeah, basically said that this stuff is just, is like 90% Oloroso Sherry Cask Finish um, whiskey, uh, but it's a blend, so it's got a few other bits in there, but uh, it's it's really good. It's cost like £35 or something like that, a bit less, maybe 30 quid, 25 I can't remember exactly. Um, this was a Christmas present anyway, that's why I can't remember. Uh, and yeah, it's really good stuff. It's, you know, it's not overly complex, but it is... Uh, it's good blended whiskey, 13 year old, so it's got a good age statement on it. Um, yeah, a 6 out of 10 for that one. Uh, next up in my collection, selection is Famous Grouse, but as you can see from the label, this is a special old Famous Grouse. Nice. Uh, 1992, um, so this was a bottle from my late father-in-law, um, part of his selection, and I'm proud to have it in my selection now. And yeah, it's actually really nice stuff. Um, you can't really rate this one, um, because it's got memories involved, so. Uh, next up is Cuddy Sark Prohibition. If you watch any sort of whiskey tube, um, you shall know that uh, this bottle is really good. It comes in at 50%, uh, it's like 20 to 25 quid, um, and yeah, because of that higher ABV, it just delivers some great flavors um, for, a, for a blended whiskey, basically. And yeah, I, I've had several bottles of this. Um, it's another good six out of 10, along with the cheers. Right, last but not least in the blends is Thompson Brothers, Thompson Bros, blended Scotch whiskey. Uh, it's great. You can see the uh, bit on the front here. Um, so yeah, Thompson Brothers, the blended Scotch whiskey. It's you know aged over six years. Goes into weird fatting, so forth. Comes in 46%, non-chill filtered. Yep, no chill filtering. Um, this is fabulous stuff. I will be replacing this once I've finished it off. Uh, there's not a lot left in there. Um, but yeah, what can you say for the price? I mean, just fantastic whiskey. Um, 
another one of these whiskies that if again you've watched a lot of whiskey tube uh, you know more uh, you know well that it's um, high praised uh, on many many people's channels um, but yeah I really like this one uh, seven to seven and a half out of ten it's uh, no it's probably a seven out of ten yeah Right, okay, now on to my bourbons, uh, stroke ryes. Um, I've got a rye, it's not American, it's English, um, from the Oxford uh, Artisan Distillery, or whatever they want to call it. I can't remember what they call it. Yeah, oh, I, got, I got it right. <laughs> um, Oxford rye, so I got this with Sumpton Whiskey Club, so again, uh, I suggest you go and Google Sumpton Whiskey Club, it's nice. Uh, club to be in uh, because you don't know what you're going to get every other month um, for 50 quid. Um, it could be anything, you know, this last month it was, or last time it was released, it was this Oxford Rye. Um, Heritage Grains comes in at 50%. Um, it's quite a bit left in it. I haven't been enthused by it. Um, I like the idea of it. I like the, the they're using these heritage grains to produce it, but I, I, unfortunately Oxford uh, not really impressing me uh, for some reason. It's it's fine. Um, I don't, but I'm not reaching for it, which which maybe I should be. I, I, I've tried to give it. I'm trying to give it some chance, but um, it's not proving great. But um, it's a solid five out of ten. Um, yeah, I wouldn't get it again. Uh, next up, a staple in pretty much most people, bourbon cupboards, shelves, Wild Turkey 101. This is the nice new packaging. Um, what a great whiskey, uh, or bourbon even. Whiskey bourbon, bourbon whiskey. Uh, this stuff, I've, I've had so many bottles of this stuff now. It's just so solid. Um, some great flavors in there. Um, there's more than enough. Whiskey Tube reviews on Wild Turkey 101. All the bourbon guys over in the States still bang on about it, really. It's always, uh, you know, it's always their budget bourbon that they go on about, and then they're like, they're, they'll be reviewing something, and they're like, well, you know, but Wild Turkey 101, you know, it's still that, it's not comparable to that. So this gives great flavor for a great price, especially in the UK. Um, do go and pick up a bottle, 50.5%, so 101 proof. Great bourbon. Next bourbon up is Old Forester 1920 Prohibition style. This uh, this is a great whiskey. Um, my bourbon background is quite. <laughs> Intensive, I guess. Is that, a, is that the right way to go about it? Um, but my benchmark, which I found maybe two, three, four years ago now, maybe, um, was uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, so yeah, four years ago, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Battle Bottle <laughs> Barrel Proof, even. Um, yeah, it was in a, a blind tasting with the Scotch Test Dummies. Uh, they came over to the UK, to, Sc to Scotland. I flew up there. We had a big blind tasting with Roy from Aquavitae. They brought a bottle of ECBP, so a nice great barrel proof. The bottle of Wow, as Bart calls it. Um, and yeah, it was Wow. I mean, it was fantastic. Um, this, this, this Old Forester Prohibition is up there with it. Um, I think this, for value for money, uh, I managed to pick it up when I was in the States, so that helps. Um, just, I think it's very difficult to get in the UK um, just for the import stuff, you know, that rubbish. Which hopefully will get sorted out soon. But yeah, fantastic. 57.5%, so 115 proof. Uh, as it's an American bottle, it's 750 mil rather than 700 as well, so that's another plus. Uh, and it may be back in my suitcase. So. Fantastic stuff, love this bourbon, uh, and yeah, savouring every drop that I do take out of it. Um, eight and a half to nine, nine? Eight and a half to nine out of ten for that one? Really, really good. Really good. Right, next up is whiskies from all over Scotland, really. There's not many actually, which is quite surprising. Uh, it's really unique. I didn't realise I had so many blends at the beginning. But, um, 
We'll start off with this. Glen Turret, 12 year old, made in release on the whole new rebranding in this beautifully exquisite bottle. I mean, it's a fantastic bottle, isn't it? Um, this stuff, sherried, 12 years old, 46%. I think it is chill filled. Something along those lines. Doesn't say it anywhere that it doesn't. Uh, which is a bit annoying. But this is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. This is one of my one of those special whiskies that I bring out for special people on special occasions. Um, and yeah, again, influenced by people to buy it again by other YouTubers such as Aquavito Roy. Um, which a few of these are, that's influenced by them. So, Glintar at 12, good 8 out of 10 that one. Next up is Lindor's Abbey. So this is a Lowland um, from Lindor's Abbey. This is their heavily sherried version. As you can see, the colour on that is disgustingly deep and dark. So a, a very, very ripe cask. Um, Great whiskey again. Um, obviously, they're really young, so it's only like three, four-year-old spirit. Um, but yeah, this comes in at what forty-nine point four percent, so it's a really nice ABV. Uh, it is non-chill filtered and stuff. I think. I don't know, actually. I would presume it is. But anyway. But yeah, Lindor's Abbey. Uh, Lowland single malt. This is the casks of Lindor's. So this is a big old sherry butt. Colorado Sherry Butt exclusive. Um, fantastic stuff. Um, really deep sherries. It's a nice Christmassy dram. Loads of those big fruitcake flavours going on. Uh, and yeah, a big sherry bomb um, for when you're in the mood for a sherry bomb. Great one to have for a sherry bomb, actually. Um, yeah, a good seven. Seven out of ten for that one. And uh, next up, we have my bottle of Aquavite Loch Lomond 10 year old Chardonnay yeast natural colour, unpeated, unchill filtered lemony, sherbety, effervescentness um, that Roy um, well we, we, when we bought, I bought the 19, uh, 20, 19, 20, uh, 20, was it 2020 or 2019 Loch Lomond open release, which was the first time they'd done the Chardonnay yeast. I think it was it during COVID lockdown that first year. Um, I picked up a bottle because it was interesting. Managed to pick it up quite reasonably priced, etc., etc. Fantastic stuff. So Roy was like pushing and pushing Michael Henry at Loch Lomond to get this, I think. Um, but yeah, again, fantastic whiskey. Uh, I give. What do you give it? It's, it's again, it's a special one, so it's not really to mark, I guess, or give a rating. But it's a good seven and a half to eight out of ten, I think. Yeah, it's, it's good. Next up, so th this is actually quite a line of Roy uh, Aquavite um, influenced whiskies, to be fair. So next one up is the Bowmore. Vault Edition first release, um, big coastal ocean side, good. I mean, I've had a few other Bowmores and the regular releases, and they're okay, aren't they? They're not the greatest thing in the world, but they're not dreadful. They're you know they're a, a good five and it's five to six out of tens, you know, depending on their age. This though, this is what they can release. This is what they can produce, and it's annoying that they don't put it out more. Um, obviously non-age statement but 51.5% um, I believe it's believe it's non-chill filled and whatnot. Uncoloured it doesn't maybe maybe not. Um, but yeah fabulous salty PT. Um, I actually gave it this recently to my uh, mother-in-law's partner and brother-in-law uh, we had a family do gave him a tasting of a few different whiskies this was one of them they said it was really peaty compared to something that I would consider heavily peated um, which we'll see a bit later on but um fabulous stuff seven and a half to eight out of ten now beautiful beautiful whiskey 
Okay, time for the non whiskey. So the two little alternatives, as Ralphie calls them. Um, first up is a rum. This is a Hamden Park, Hamden Estate Pure Single Rum, Jamaican rum. It's called the Younger. Um, it's a light rum Owen Kelly, something like that. So L R O K for some reason. I'm not sure why that means, but. I really should probably read the bottle, but I was too interested in what's in the bottle rather than on it. Um, but it's got wild fermentation, it's only pot still, it's beautifully aged, uh, it's got high esters I think, so 314.8 GR slash HLPs. Whatever, and congeners, it's got another rating on there, so there's a load of information on there, 47%. Um, this is a really good rum, and for the price, again, um, tasty. And I haven't dented too much of it, so I, I, you know, I maybe should try drink a bit more of that rum. Um, next up, uh, if you've seen a few previous of my whiskey collection videos, um, you'll probably see this in there. This is a cognac, fine champagne, uh, Audrey XO. Um, this is just a game changer of whiskey a game changer of, it's game, it is a game changer of whiskey because you should be trying this as well this cognac can stand up to pretty much most of these whiskies on this table um, it is absolutely fabulous stuff um, I really really enjoy this cognac uh, when I drink it it's such a delicate beautiful nose uh, I've done a whole review on it go, go and watch that but that's this is a good Eight to nine out of ten, probably a nine out of ten for, for me anyway. Right, so another a couple of weird bottles here. Another um, Sumpton Whiskey Club one. Um, this is the Baron Whiskey Baron. Uh, it's a fifteen-year-old single grain whiskey finished in a port cask. So it has big, um, bouncy fruit, red fruit notes, and so forth. Um, it's actually really good, I quite enjoy it. So it has stayed in the bottle quite uh, more, longer than uh, some of the others. Some of the others I try, I just drink them to get them out of the way, to be honest. Um, whereas some of the, you know, a few of the summertime ones I've kept around for a bit longer. So this one, very good. Um, a good seven out of 10, I think. Uh, next up is a signed bottle. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Signed bottle of from Ralphie when I won it about three years ago now, probably. Um, so yeah, I won it in a, a competition when um, I think Ralphie done his first live stream with Roy uh, in his in the broom cupboard, or wherever it was. Uh, so this was a Glen Allerkey 12. Uh, this is actually a Infinity bottle now. So I don't know what's in it. I can't remember when the last time I put stuff in it, um, but it's been marrying in there for well over a year. Um, like maybe even two years. I don't think I've touched it for that long. Um, so I tell you what, I'm going to try it now. Yeah, that's not bad actually. A uh, bit of peat and plenty of sherry notes going on in there. Very nice. We'll see what that's like. Well, what can I say? It should be a blender. Um, without writing stuff down. <laughs> so, next up begins Campbelltown. So, if you're into whiskey, um, you know where Campbelltown is, you know what Campbelltown whiskey is. Uh, there's only... There's only three distilleries there. I don't know why I thought there were four. Why do I think there was four? I don't know. Anyway, um, first up, so this is actually an interesting bottle for uh, multiple ways. Um, first off, it's SMWS. So at the beginning this year, I joined um, SMWS. Thank you to um, Marcus Kreitner and Se Sevi, uh, the alchemist, alchemist even, um, for helping me um, attain SMWS um, membership for a reasonable price. Um, but yeah, this one uh, is a salty yogurt and a silver spoon. I mean, their names are crazy. 
Uh, they've got some great notes on here, etc, etc. 60.3% uh, and it's cask number 93.196. Now, cask number 93, uh, that means it's from distillery Glen Scotia. So this is a Glen Scotia from Campbelltown. This is fantastic stuff. I mean, for a, you know, it's cast strength, eight-year-old whiskey from Glen Scotia. I mean, you can't really go too wrong. And yeah, you get that weird sadness with it. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna try and just buy SMW whiskey this SMWS whiskey this year, which I think is an interesting experiment to see. Obviously, you've got stuff here. There's a couple of things that I, I'm maybe outside of that, so I'm probably going to replace maybe some of the bourbons, maybe because like, I won't. I like to have a bourbon on the shelf, uh, just a, a low proof one, so I'll probably get another buffalo, no, another buffalo trace. Um, and yeah, but predominantly any other whiskies, I'm only going to buy SMWS. So interesting start. Let's go. Your eight, eight years old. Eight out of ten. Right, so moving into the rest of Campbelltown, we'll start off, we'll start, i tell you what, we'll start off, I was going to do it one way around, but now I'm going to do it the other way around, because one's my favourite, and it's going to be the distillery that's closest to my whiskey journey, and all that sort of thing, you know, and so we'll start off here, we've got a long row red, so, fans of Springbank, uh, this is their heavily peated version, long row. Uh, this is the red version, so they stick it in red wine casks. This is the Pinot Noir, 15 year old one. Uh, I don't know what you can say about this, but this is fantastic stuff. Really, really, really enjoyable. Um, great big berry fruity notes, you know, as well, but that peat coming on top of it as well, and that funkiness from the Campbelltown, that lovely strength, that 51.4 ABV, just giving it great carrier flavour into the mouth, and a beautiful, beautiful mouth. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, next up, another Long Row Red. So you can see a theme here. Uh, I'm yeah, you're, I'm, I've, I've been influenced over the years that Campbelltown is the way to go. So yeah, long way red. This one is the real refill Malbec, ten year old. Um, this is a lot fruitier I found than the Pinot Noir. So the Pinot Noir is the newer uh, release, uh, whereas this uh, Malbec release. Um, yeah, a bit fruitier, uh, slightly softer, the peat's not as, as harsh, uh, well not as harsh but not as prominent I, I found. Um, again, really good whiskey, can't compare it. It's another 8 out of 10. Last but not least for Springbank, Springbank Car Strength. Um, 12 years old, beautiful, beautiful whiskey again. Um, this one is, um, obviously you can see by the colour, uh, it's ex-bourbon cask, um, so it's a bit more pure, I guess you'd call it, from Springbank Distillery. Uh, a few of the others recently have been sherried, so I think the last one was really heavily sherried. Uh, but yeah, this one, 55.9%, so a big old, big old slap in your face, ABV wise. But it is cast strength, had a bit of water, really softens it down. All those notes start coming out. Um, good stuff. I've got some good whiskey here. Um, yeah, another 8 out of 10. Come on. Spring bank cast strength. Right, last but not least, my favourite distillery, I guess you'd call it. Um, long been a favourite. Um, income increasingly hard to get. Um, but luckily I do have, I have a local shop which I can go to and sometimes I can get them quite easily. It seems that I'm starting to be able to get the 12 and uh, maybe the 16 a bit easier now. I could even probably pick up a Springbank 10 if need be. But Kilkerran, uh, let's start off 
with the one that started the whole shebang of my whiskey journey, really. Kilcarran, 12 year old, um, non chill filtered, no added colour, um, 46%. Uh, this is just such a solid, solid whiskey. I mean, there's there's barely anything wrong with it, to be fair. It's so balanced. Um, there's light smoke, slight peat, um, some sherry sweetness, um, just some beautiful, just very, very rounded and a, a fabulous whiskey. Um, price has gone up a bit recent, you know, in the few past few years. I think I picked up my first bottle of this for like £35 back in, I don't know, 2018, something like that. Um, but yeah, this was now, it's like £45, so getting a bit pricey. Um, but obviously that's inflation for you and so forth. But still, for for sub fifty pound whiskey, this this it's very 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 good. Um, right, let's go for this one. Lucky enough to get hold of my Kilkerran eight year old cast strength port cask matured. Now I'm not a lover of port cask finishes. Let's be fair, I'm not. Um, although that Whiskey Baron one is quite nice. Um, but yeah, Port Cask Matured um, Kilcarran is actually really good. It's never gonna be as good or, or anything like that as far as the original sherried um, Kilcarran eight year old car strength. That was just fantastic, like amazing. The last um, sherried ones have been slightly soul free but I don't mind that that's not a problem for me um, and in fact yeah I maybe should have bought the charity one as well I had the opportunity to buy them both um, but you know uh, budgeting and, and so forth again so this is these are like 60 to 65 pounds now um, but again fantastic whiskey not a lot left in the end so again uh, another 8 out of 10 for that one definitely 100% Right, next up is Kilkerran Heavily Peated. Um, this is batch number four. Uh, this is a fantastic heavily peated whiskey. Um, the heavily peated version of Kilkerran uh, from Glengarl Distillery. Um, great stuff. Uh, batch number four, 58.6% ABV on this one. So it's a big boy. Um, lovely, beautiful colour, natural, non chill filled, all that sort of loveliness that we like. Um, but yeah, great lemony notes going on in there and stuff like that. Um, sort of those notes that you get in the Kelkaran 16 sort of are in this as well. So really nice that there's that distillery character coming through, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy these. Um, batch number four needs to be finished off soon. But um, good stuff. Another 8 out of 10. Uh, and then last but not least, Kilcarran Heavily Peated. Uh, this is batch number seven, uh, so this is 59.1%. Uh, again, fantastic whiskey. I haven't done a comparison side by side. Um, I think I have done a few tastings uh, when I've been of, of an evening, you know, and tried them side by side. Um, very similar. I think I prefer batch four for some reason, but um, this batch number seven is still great whiskey. Um, again, haven't really dented it too much, so because uh, they are a bit gold dusty now, so trying to savour it a bit more. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it depends what sort of heavily peated mood I'm in, I guess, uh, as they go. So, yeah, it's um, it's good stuff. Kilcarran heavily peated. Love it. So, there you go, there's my whiskey collection. Uh, comment down below what your favourite might be uh, and what's most intriguing for you. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and um, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, uh, and would really help me out on the way to a thousand subs, um, which would be amazing. Um, yeah, thumbs ups as well. Thumbs ups are always good. So here's to you, thank you for watching, and that is the last drop. <laughs>